welcome back or just welcome if you're new to this channel after i scanned the modules in the last video and following the full codes which came up i decided to remove the inverter from this car and to replace it with a new part in the beginning i unscrew the bolts from the plug that connects the high voltage cable or harness to the high voltage battery I need to remove different parts throughout this job for a better access, so that in the end I can easily remove the inverter from the car, which is mounted right on the right side of this engine. The voltage cable is also fastened with a bracket onto the firewall, but it is a simple one to detach. Before I attempted this, I have already removed the terminals from the 12 volt battery, which is located in the rear part of the back seat or better to say in the backrest of the rear right passenger seat that you need to access from inside the trunk. One of the ground cables crosses directly in front of the high voltage battery and is fastened there with a 13 mm nut and some plastic brackets. Working on this S400 hybrid is just like on any other Mercedes, there is nothing special about it from my point of view. So this ground cable has also to be removed from its position as it is attached with zip ties right on the high voltage harness, which needs to be relocated to have more space on this engine side so that there would be more allowance around the working area. I do cover the plugs to be more safe and I use some bubble wrap to seal and secure of the high voltage connections that I have just unplugged. Following up, the removal sequence of the other parts continues. The engine cover comes off next, so first in line to be removed are the two air ducts from right and left. These air ducts guide the airflow all the way to the air filter. This one is right inside of the engine cover, which is also the air filter housing. Once the engine cover is removed, I have increased my clearance around the working area and I have a better view of the inverter's position. After raising the car up on the two post lift, I do get an improved view on this situation. I need to remove the right side of the exhaust so that I get a better access on the inverter. There are two end torx bolts holding the exhaust pipe to the manifold that need to be removed first, so I'll go for it. Now that the exhaust pipe with the catalytic converter is loosened from the manifold, I do need to unbolt it also from the middle section, from where the pipe routes back the rear mufflers. Here we have some clamps that are very rusty and will be replaced in the end. To loosen up these nuts, I use a 13 mm key. Thank you. 
Here we have another bracket holding the middle section of the exhaust pipe right behind the catalytic converter. These bolts are also very rusty and going on slow on them is as good as possible as if they break there would be more work to be done. I had to lower the car down to unplug the wiring from the two O2 sensors that are installed on this pipe. It's not a comfortable position, as you need to bend over inside the engine bay to reach up for them. The connections are right behind the engine, just over the transmission. Removing the harness from the bracket was more difficult than the unplugging. Now, this section of the exhaust pipe is free and just needs to be taken off. Zooming a little bit in, and here comes the inverter inside. Removing the heat shield from the exhaust comes up next. For this, I use a 30 torx bit and a ratchet to unfasten the three bolts that are holding this part. It's not the ideal spot to work on. For one of the bolts, I do have access only from the top part of the engine bay. It is a M torx bolt and not the same as the others with a 30 torx pad. It's a pain in the to remove these bolts from the heat shield, from the exhaust, from the right exhaust manifold. Manifold. It's right above. It would it would be easier to remove the exhaust manifold, but the bolts are all with rust. You can unscrew them at the moment. Here is the second. Here is the first. Hold. was just I got the first one from the side and now just the top but there is one more left I need to find it The easiest one to remove. Now I think the heat sheet should be all free, loose. There is not enough space to remove the heat shield from the top, so I do need to lift the car up again and to get it from the bottom. Trying to pull out the second heat shield with one hand and holding the camera in the other hand doesn't make the job look easier. With this shield detached, we will have another scenery of the inverter's placement, as there is a lot of time passing by on this job, keeping an in-depth view and point of detail on this work is not easy. 
Just editing the raw material in Fast Forward would not bring anything for use to you. So, I do need to split this job in a few parts. How many it will be, I don't know, but we will see. So, here is the inverter for the hybrid system. Coolant pipe goes to the DC, DC converter. It's right behind the arch liner on the right side, passenger side. We've got some oil leak over there. Not as important as our big problem, hybrid problem. Engine doesn't start. We need to get hybrid cable. Loosen, bolt. Fastened directly on the gearbox on the transmission. Hmm. Ground cable needs to come off. On the other side, also coolant hose remove. And some connector. Okay. This one we will remove only after we get the bolts off from the inverter. The suspension bar, stabilization bar needs to come off. More oil leaks. We can solve them later after we solve the hybrid problem after the engine starts. Hopefully after changing the hybrid inverter or control module for the hybrid system stay in touch